Leonardo Pisano Bigelow was a brilliant mathematician who developed the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio, brought Arabic numerals to Europe. He was one of the first people to introduce the idea that nature is made up of numbers. Pythagoras already proposed this a thousand years ago, but Fibonacci was the first to give hard evidence for it. He was born in Pisa, Italy, circa 1170, to the Bonacci family. His father was a diplomat, and when he was a young boy, his family moved to northern Algeria, where he was educated. Later in his childhood, he traveled to the Middle East, where he learned the Arabic numerals and their arithmetic. Oh, I see. You are confounded by these Hindu Arabic numerals. It must be hard for you to uh, understand such an efficient system. How can I trust you? I'll have to teach you the essence of the art. Let's start the show. Fibonacci returned to Pisa. Two years later, he published Liber Abaci, which was the cornerstone of his success. Almost all of what he is famous for is written in that text. The first section is devoted to Arabic numerals and arithmetic. It was almost exclusively this book that has popularized the system throughout Europe. It was mainly used by bankers who exchanged currency. See, back in the Middle Ages, all the cities used different currencies. If you went to a different city, you'd have to use one of these bankers. But if they were using a foreign arithmetic system, you don't know if they were ripping you off. It was for this reason that the numerals were banned. What was the rabbit problem? Well, after Fibonacci returned home, he became interested in rabbit reproduction and the maths behind it. I can't explain it too well without diagrams, so I'll hand you over to Jackson. Thanks, Anson. Alright, so you got yourself some rabbits. All the rabbits in this thought experiment take one month to gestate, one month mature, give birth every month, and they never die. You start off with a pair of immature rabbits. This is month zero. In month one, the rabbits have matured and mated. In month two, they have given birth to another pair. There are now a pair of mature rabbits and a pair of immature rabbits. In month three, the original pair gave birth and the other pair is mated. There are now two mature pairs and one immature pair. In month four, the original pair gives birth, the second mature pair gives birth, and the immature pair matures and mates. There are now three mature pairs and two immature ones. In month 5, all the mature pairs give birth, and the immature pairs mature. There are now 5 mature pairs and 3 immature pairs. The problem is, how do we predict how many rabbits there will be in succeeding months? The answer is the Fibonacci sequence. To find out the number of rabbits in any given month, you have to add the mature rabbits and the immature rabbits together. These numbers are variables, and so we have to equate them to another part in the problem. Since it takes two months for a newborn pair to give birth, the number of newborn pairs in one month is equal to the number of total pairs there were in two months previous. That's the number of immature. The number of mature pairs is equal to all the pairs in the previous month. In other words, you add the number of pairs in the two previous months. This is the basis of the Fibonacci sequence. 75,025, 121,393, 196,418, 317,811? Uh, That's all I got. The Fibonacci sequence occurs everywhere in the universe, places you wouldn't even expect. It occurs on the leaves of a flower, pine cones, the spirals of a cauliflower, everywhere. Uh, how does it work? You, you start with 0 and 1, and you add the two previous numbers. So the next number is 1, and you add the two previous numbers. So the next number is 2, and then you add the two previous numbers, 2 and 1, to get 3, and so on. Its most commonplace in nature is the Fibonacci spiral. It's basically the Fibonacci sequence with squares. Instead of pure numbers, it uses side lengths. You start with 0 and 1, and that's the first side length of your square. Then you take the two previous numbers and add them to get 1 for the next side length, and so on. 
drawing your squares in clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. From that, you draw a curved line from each corner to corner. Have you ever seen a novelist shell or a sunflower? Well, with a novelist shell, you can easily see it. But with the sunflower, the spirals are parallel, and the numbers of the spiral are Fibonacci numbers. It's a tendency, not a law. You can find Fibonacci numbers everywhere, such as in this plant. There are five petals in this whole stalk. In this plant, too, there's five petals in each stalk. Five is a Fibonacci number. You can find them in all sorts of plants, like this one right here. Once again, five petals in each stalk. Five is a Fibonacci number. Some flowers, such as sunflowers, you can see natural spirals in their florets. The number of spirals in one direction are Fibonacci numbers, and vice versa. The numbers can range from 34 to 55, and sometimes it can even be 89. You can even see it in pine cones, such as this one right here. As you can see, the number of spirals on this pine cone are Fibonacci numbers. What is the golden rectangle? The golden rectangle is a rectangle with the length of A plus B, while A is the width. Its defining character is that A plus B in ratio to A equals the ratio of A to B. The number in question is called phi, or the golden ratio, and it is 1.61803. It has some three, very interesting nine. characteristics, one of which is that if you remove the square made by a times a you will get another golden rectangle it isn't in complete compliance with the fibonacci sequence however if you start at a low fibonacci number one for instance and go from there you find that it does not produce a golden rectangle although as you start moving up the line it gets closer to the golden ratio when you divide two high values consecutive Fibonacci numbers such as 2584 and 1597, you get 1 1.61803381340013 congruent up to the second three. Is it only applicable to the Fibonacci spiral? Nope, not at all. In fact, the golden rectangle specifically, the golden ratio has been used to objectively analyze beauty as been observed in the architecture paintings and the human face it's everywhere from pythagoras to fibonacci to newton mathematicians and and scientists have been fascinated with the idea that the universe is made up of numbers and fixed laws that not everything is complex as we make it out to be just as there are no colors but only different wavelengths of the same particle just as there's no difference between me and this rock quarks and electrons all that there is is just one plus one. Thanks for watching.